Hi, I'm Rich Brown for CNET. Today we're going to take a look at the Asus Transformer All-in-One. So this is a really unique new system from Asus. It's going to be available in April for $12.99, and it's probably one of the more involved desktops we've ever reviewed here. In its standard configuration, which you see here, it's a pretty simple system. It's Windows 8, you have a wireless mouse and keyboard, it's an 18.4-inch screen with a 19 by 10 resolution. There's a Core i5 chip inside it, a terabyte hard drive, 8 gigs of memory, as well as the more or less expected ports from USB 3, analog audio out, SD card, etc., etc. So while 18.4 inches is definitely small for a standard all-in-one in this price range, what you also get with this system is an Android tablet. I can push a button on the side and swap over to the Android's 4.1 Jelly Bean OS. You can see it here. Then the screen comes off and I have a pretty gigantic tablet to take around the house. And the reason that works is because there's an NVIDIA Tegra 3 chip inside this display, which lets the system function by itself. So we've seen a couple other systems like this. There's a system from Lenovo coming out later this year, and Sony already put one out uh, during the launch of Windows 8 last year. So like that Sony, the idea with this Asus system is that you're not really going to take this tablet out on the train or really in anywhere where it's going to be a true mobile device. It's mostly for taking this screen around and using it someplace where you wouldn't want to use a traditional desktop, say plunking it down in a kid's bedroom for a little while, using it on the couch to browse a newspaper. Now, even more interesting with this system, it also has a remote desktop feature. So we can either hit this mode switch icon or hit this button on the side, and the system will automatically go back into Windows 8 via remote desktop mode. So the tablet connects back to Windows 8 via Wi-Fi. In order for that to work, both the base station and the tablet have to be on the same wireless network, and you're probably best off if you use a 5 gigahertz network as opposed to 2.4 gig, which is more common, it tends to have a lot of traffic on it. Even further extending the utility of the system, it also has an HDMI output. So that means you can connect the standard PC monitor to the base unit, use that as a standard desktop, and then pop off the display here and use that as an Android tablet, or even a remote in and have two users on the same Windows 8 system via separate monitors. The benefits of Android on the tablet are that you get a clean interface, a giant app library compared to what you'll find in Windows 8 right now, as well as a pretty good touch input experience. It's also interesting to have the tablet and the base station sort of work as two separate computers if you want. But it, overall, the concept seems like it would be a little smoother if it just ran Windows 8 throughout. Granted, then you wouldn't have the multi-user experience, but there'd be a lot less fiddling and back and forth between the different OSs, and it'd probably be generally an easier concept for people to understand. It's also worth pointing out that the tablet is heavy. It's not as heavy as the Sony Tap 20, actually, which came in just under 12 pounds. This is about 5.6 pounds. So for battery life, we found that the tablet has just under five hours of use if you want to use it for watching movies. And in Windows 8 remote desktop mode, it comes in at about three and a half hours. So there's definitely a drop off there. So ultimately, of course, the question is who should buy this thing? And right now, it's kind of hard to say. We're going to have Intel coming out with the next generation of CPUs in the next six months or so. They promise better performance, better battery life, and hopefully smaller, more lightweight versions of systems like this. Other vendors are also working on PCs with similar design in that it's an all-in-one and a tablet. There's various iterations of how you can do that, of course. But I think by the end of this year, we will see a whole fleet of PCs like this, and we'll kind of have a better idea of what we want, what we expect, and what a good price is. So all that said, I can recommend the system if you like the idea of a big tablet and you want sort of an extendable desktop and you like Android. For the mainstream consumer, though, the system is probably a bit too expensive to recommend, particularly with so many other PCs like it coming out of the next few months. So I'm Rich Brown. This is the Asus Transformer All-in-One.